Hi, this is Lori Power, Director of Evangelization and Discipleship at Christ the Redeemer Parish, and welcome to Talking Saints. I'm here today with my co-host, Pete Sanchez, reporter for the Catholic Star Herald. How are you, Pete? I'm doing well, Lori. Just wonderful being here with you again today. Yes, we're in the midst of spring. It's lovely. <laughs> yeah, you know, it is. It's, uh, it's, yeah, it's a good day. Good change. <laughs> yeah. uh, so today we are talking about St. Dominic Savio. But before that, since we are still in the year of St. Joseph, we will Mm -hmm. continue our practice of praying the litany. Right, Pete? We are. We are. And uh, we want to remember the words that Pope Francis, when he declared this year of St. Joseph, he talked about him and said, each of us, he said, Pope Francis said, each of us can discover in Joseph, the man who goes unnoticed, a daily discreet and hidden presence, an intercessor, a support and guide in times of trouble. And St. Joseph reminds us that those who appear hidden or in the shadows can play an incomparable role in the history of salvation. A word of recognition and of gratitude is due to them all. So it's been a pleasure uh, for me personally getting to uh, know St. Joseph. And I know you, Lori, have been, we've been talking a lot about St. Joseph during this year. And he's uh, he's a great saint to model. Mm. And uh, I think one of our first podcasts, we actually did talk about... That's right. Talking Saints. So people are wondering, where's where's the Talking Saints devotion that, you know, we're doing this every time this year during before the individual ones, but there is a... uh, particular Talking Saints devoted just to St. Joseph that you can find on talking.catholicstarherald.org where you can find all of our shows Mm -hmm. and also the uh, stellar lineup of Talking Catholic shows and videos. So, yeah. There you go. Go go check it out. Go to St. Joseph. Yeah, (laughs) right? (laughs) Definitely. Let's do that. And we're also... (laughs) Uh, We're also going to start a litany now, right, Lori? This is the litany litany of of St. Joseph. Joseph. And I believe Pope Francis has asked that we pray for persecuted Christians. So we will offer the litany for that intention. Okay. That's beautiful. Okay. Now, I'll start it and then Lori will just respond and you can join along. You can can pray with us. Um, In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Spirit, amen. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, the Lord have mercy on us. Christ have mercy. Christ hear us. Christ graciously hear us. God the Father of heaven. Have mercy on us. God the Son, Redeemer of the world. Have mercy on us. God the Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God. Have mercy on us. Holy Mary. Pray for us. Saint Joseph. Pray for us. Renowned offspring of David. Pray for us. Light of patriarchs. Pray for us. Spouse of the Mother of God. Pray for us. Chaste guardian of the Virgin. Pray for us. Foster father of the Son of God. Pray for us. Diligent protector of Christ. Pray for us. Head of the Holy Family. Pray for us. Joseph most just. Pray for us. Joseph most chaste. Pray for us. Joseph most prudent. Pray for us. Joseph most strong. Pray for us. Joseph most obedient. Pray for us. Joseph most faithful. Pray for us. Mirror of patience. Pray for us. Lover of poverty. Pray for us. Model of artisans. Pray for us. Glory of home life. Pray for us. Guardian of virgins. Pray for us. Pillar of families. Pray for us. Solace of the wretched. Pray for us. Hope of the sick. Pray for us. Patron of the dying. Pray for us. Terror of demons. Pray for us. Protector of Holy Church. Pray for us. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Spare us, O Lord. Let us pray, O God, in your in your inevitable providence, you are pleased to choose Blessed Joseph to be the spouse of your most holy mother. Grant, we beg you, that we may be worthy to have him for our intercessor in heaven, whom on earth we venerate as our protector. You who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. St. Joseph. Pray for us. Thanks, Pete. Oh, thank you, Lori. Beautiful. And so what saint, what saint do we have on the docket today? Oh, so this is probably a lesser known saint, a, a child saint, actually. So St. Dominic Savio. And he was actually a student of another saint that we talked about not long ago, St. John Bosco. Yes. So. And you can find that again on talking, talking.catholicstarherald.org with St. John Bosco. So you can get the full story of John Bosco and Dominic Savio once you listen to both. It's kind of, um, it's a two-parter maybe, right? <laughs> That's true. Um, That's I love, true. I love um, we get these instances of saints meeting saints. 
Absolutely. I think it happens and a lot. It does. So, it does. I love it. We so got choose your friends squad. well. That's what we learned from yeah. Saints. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he was born on April 2nd, right, Laura? Yes, 1842 in northern Italy. And he was the second of 11 children born to Charles and Bridget Savio, who were just poor, um, simple, hardworking, but very pious people. And they, of course, taught him about Jesus and the Blessed Mother. And um, they attended church uh, in a, a town not too far from where they lived. And Dominic would be in church all the time. And once he learned how to serve mass, he was there almost every day. And while at that time, so in, in 1910, Pope Pius X actually lowered the first communion age to seven. But at that time, it was usually our early teens. But uh, St. Dominic actually asked his pastor if he could receive first communion when he was seven. So he was able to do so at an age earlier than most other children at the time. So he showed his love for Jesus from a very young age, definitely. Mm-hmm. And didn't he say his first communion was the happiest day of his life? Yes, yes. I believe being that young and that, pi- that pious, and uh, he was known for uh, spending time out praying outside the church. That's right, even all if he went weather. to the church, right, yeah, if it even was even closed. It was snowing or rain, yeah. he was just that devoted from that such young age. And uh, I love it how on the day he received his first communion, he wrote four promises in the mm. little book. Do you know these? Yes. He His talked four about resolutions. Four yeah. resolutions. He said, one, I will go to confession often and as frequently to Holy Communion as my confessor allows. I wish to sanctify the Sundays and festivals in a special manner. My friends shall be Jesus and Mary. Mm. And this is one I love. And I might actually get, I don't know, maybe not a tattoo. <laughs> but he said death rather than sin. Mm, and yes. that is kind of, that's... That's intense. <laughs> that is intense, especially for somebody so young. He's a preteen. That's true. And it's... <laughs> well, he was only seven when he, when he made these resolutions. That's pretty incredible. So, yeah. yeah. And it was unusual for... Um, people to go to communion often at that time. So the fact that he resolved to do so and under the direction of his confessor, that was pretty unusual, yeah. uh, especially for someone that age. So and he, he even, not only death before sin, but I love how even the trials, he walked three miles of school each That's day. Right. <laughs> and one of the things he said, you know, a farmer asked him, you know, why are you not tired? Why aren't you tired? And he, uh, he replied, nothing seems tiresome or painful when you are working for a master who pays well. That's true. And I love it. It reminds me of that other quote. I don't know who said it, but it's uh, something about, you know, um, you know, working, working, uh, working, you know, doesn't pay much, but, the, you know, the retirement package That's is true. great. <laughs> So um, I've heard that said about working for the church. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I, so, um, oh, and I think along that same path, when he was walking to school, he was also asked, like, aren't you afraid to walk so far alone on this country road? And he would say, I'm not alone. I have my guardian angel with me. Yeah. So he uh, he believed from a very young age that, you know, his guardian angel was protecting him and he was working for a very good master who would pay well and protect him. <laughs> so... He, he seemed very Jesus-like in growing up mm. in uh, grade school. There was an incident where these boys up in a, they, they, in a school heating stove, they put snow and other junk, mm. and the teacher got really upset and asked who it was, and these boys blamed Dominic, That's and right. Dominic just yeah. stayed silent. And it turned out later the teacher found out what really happened. is said, Dominic, why you knew who did it. Why didn't you say? And he said, well, he knew that these boys were known troublemakers. Mm-hmm. And if they had gotten another offense, they would have been expelled. That's so true. he um, fell on the sword. That's right. I guess for them. Yeah. Um, and he said he knew, he remembered how Jesus had been unjustly accused and he remained silent. So yeah. he was imitating Christ in that moment. Just too. that the, um, and then this is how he got into the, he got known by Don Bosco, Don Bosco, right? yes. Yeah. So I believe Don Bosco used to travel with the group of boys that were in his oratory. Um, and he encountered Don Bosco as he was traveling with these boys. And I think he had heard about him before because he really wanted to go to his school. Um, and he had given Dominic a page and said, OK, take this page and memorize it and then come back the next day and recite it for me. Um, so Dominic went off and I think um, 
St. John Bosco was talking to Dominic's father, you know, trying to figure out if it would work that he could come to the school. And within a couple of minutes, Dominic comes back and recited the entire page with no problem. <laughs> and then he said, OK, but you were able to say all that. But could you understand what you just said to us? And then he clearly explained the meaning of the entire passage. So hmm. St. John Bosco was impressed right from the beginning. Yeah. And, and Dominic was able to um, go to Turin and attend his oratory of St. Francis de Sales. Uh, in 1854, when he was only 12 and a half, and he even he made a, he even talked about a, this a speech he made mm. a, an important speech to the boys where he said uh, one it is God's will that we all become saints two I don't know if I necessarily agree with this he said it is easy to become a saint <laughs> um, I guess well for him it was kind of um, there was no gray area it was only um, you know he knew the path. You know, it was easy because he knew the path. I guess that's that's how I interpret it, at least. And then three, and there are great re- rewards in heaven for saints. Mm. Um, but w- what would you say to that, Lori, when he said is he, it is easy to become well, a saint? I'm curious. <laughs> Don Bosco also basically taught them the way to become a saint. So Dominic would ask him. He was very impacted by this. I think it was a homily that St. John Bosco had given to the boys. And he said, well, I won't, I'm going to be very serious now about coming a saint, becoming a saint. And Bosco said, well, really, you just need to, you know, say your prayers devoutly, perform all your duties as you know you're supposed to, and be cheerful. God loves a cheerful giver. So in that regard, it wasn't hard to become a saint if you can do those things, you know, pray, yeah. perform your the duties that you have it for your state in life, whatever those may be, and then be cheerful. So from his perspective, yeah, it wasn't really that hard. <laughs> the knowledge was power. Mm. He knew it. And uh, for him, he, he, it, was, uh, it was cut out for him. Mm. His work was cut out for him, as uh, my father always would tell me. You know, whenever I told him all the work I had to do, oh, you got your work cut out for you. And it's <laughs> like, yeah, I know it, but th- it's not going to be easy, but I do know what I need to no, do. That's true. So, so, there you go. <laughs> that does make it a little easier when you at least know the path you're supposed to be exactly, on, right? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Maybe for him it was a little easier. Um, but, uh-huh. the, um, but at the same time, he felt it was easy to be a saint, but... It, he he was getting into from a young age mortification mm. and he would wear thin clothes during winter time and even Don Bosco was like yo you're like uh you're 12 yeah, yeah. I know <laughs> you know ease up ease up be right. joyful right yes he that's what he was always making the point you know just serve the lord where you are in a joyful way you don't have to necessarily take on all of these mortifications in order to become a saint yeah he so. sounded just one of the more serious-minded youth that I've come across. No, that's true. Um, yes, uh, you know, but he had he had um, he had the grace from God to really understand what um, what was asked of him, mm. and he even knew. He said, "I can't do big things, but I want all I do, even the smallest thing, to be for the greater glory of God." Wow. And that reminds me of like Saint Therese yes, of Lisieux, yeah, it does sound just where, like her. And again, it's like the gospel, you know, Jesus says, let the children come to me. Mm. We are all children of God and we have to have that, you know, unless you are a child, you can't enter the kingdom of heaven. And so I think we can learn a lot like uh, Dominic Savio and St. Teresa of Lisieux. Mm. And, um, Just living day to day with a cheerful heart and doing yeah. little things with great love. Absolutely. And then when occasions arise where maybe you do need to take a stand... Um, you do. And that there was a great story when he was at the school. So he was well liked by the other students. Um, and one day, apparently, there were two boys that had gotten into an argument. So they decided to settle it with a rock duel, which apparently was a way, you know, like street gangs would settle <laughs> arguments at that time. Mm-hmm. Um, so basically, they, you know, went a ways away from the oratory, like a 10 minute walk. And then they would make piles of rocks that they were basically going to try to throw at each other until someone gave up or someone was seriously injured. So Dominic pleaded with them, like, please, this isn't right. Don't do this. You're going to hurt each other. And then he finally said, "Okay, I'm not going to stop the fight, but I want you to accept one condition before you begin this fight. And they said, "Okay, so what is that? And he stepped right between them and he said, "Um, I want you to, you know, look at this crucifix and then I want you to throw the first rock at me. 
Um, and the boys were like, no, we're not going to throw rocks at you. We, we're not angry at you, Dominic. Why would we do that? And he said, no, I mean, you are willing to, uh, you won't throw a rock at me, but you're willing to sin and offend God over just, it was, the argument was over like a remark one had made to the other while they were at school. And, uh, Eventually, because of Dominic standing there silently, you know, crucifix in hand, they did drop their stones and decided to rec- reconcile. And one of the boys afterwards, I think they had perhaps interviewed, especially after Dominic died, the people that knew him, students, and, and Don Bosco also wrote, a lot of what we know about him came from a biography that St. John Bosco himself wrote about yeah. Dominic. But one of the boys said, um, at that moment, when Uh, Dominic Savio was standing between them. All my determination broke down and a cold chill ran through me. I hated myself for having forced a good friend like Dominic to go to such lengths to keep us from sin. I forgave the boy who had insulted me and asked Dominic to tell me of some good priests who would hear my confession. So Dominic was a peacemaker as well among his his classmates, his fellow students, and encouraged them to virtue too, just by his witness. Yeah. And, uh, Around the same time, you know, a little later on, he actually, uh, his health began to fail. Mm. I think he was about 14. Yeah. Right? So he, he, uh, I think he had been kind of sickly all along. That was one of the concerns of him coming to the school. Would he be healthy enough to to stay there and continue? He, uh, one of the things, um, then then he, uh, this he was falling ill while in the care of, of Father Bosco and mm. other students. And so the doctor told him to go home and he went home. Um, and, uh, this is, um, you know, you talk about bloodletting, which uh, mm. I don't know if the, either, I've read some things that say that it actually probably accelerated his death yeah. because he was bloodletting, uh, over, over four days, he was bled 10 times. And basically I think it's, they cut it and they just let it, mm. they think it Thinking can that would purge. release any, yeah, or purge any illness, I guess. Yeah, um, but I, I don't think that science uh, is <laughs> valid now. They understand that. Um, but, you know, they all thought he was going to recover, but he, he kinda, I don't know. He had maybe a premonition. I, I don't know. He, he, he knew. So when they, they uh, it sounded like, um, so St. John Bosco was telling him, you know, you need to go home. You need to be with your family. They'll be, uh, be able to take better care of you because your health is failing. And then when you recover you can come back to us but he knew he's like when i leave i'm not coming back i'm going to die when i go home and he really didn't want to leave the school he wanted to be there he wanted to be with um john bosco um but he ultimately was obedient so he did return home and it looked like he was recovering i think initially like the doctors came out he did seem to you know rally a little bit but he still knew like he said he knew that he was he i think you're right he somehow knew that he was definitely going to die when he was home um and i think they they recorded his last words Mm. um so he knew he said papa it's time take my prayer book and read for me the prayers for a happy death and then he said goodbye papa goodbye mama oh what beautiful what a beautiful sight i see and those were his last words. Mm. Um, and apparently he appeared, Dominic appeared both to his father shortly after he died. And then 19 years later, he appeared to St. John Bosco as well. And um, just talked to him about his work with youth. And I believe Don Bosco asked him, Dominic, what gave you the most comfort at the hour of death? And he told him what comforted me most was the assistance of the loving mother of God. So he also had great devotion to Mary and she was there with him apparently at the time of his death. Yeah. Yeah, he, he, um, and even after death, he, uh, and the biography that, that Bosco wrote was mm-hmm. popular and this led people to calling for his canonization. Right. But, People said, nah, he's too young. He died at 14. and uh, <laughs> How could he be a saint? Yeah. He wasn't really a martyr. Oh. And that was the other thing. They said he wasn't a martyr. Uh, but Pope Pius X did open his cause for canonization. And he was declared venerable in 1933 by Pope Pius XI. Then beatified in 1950. And then in 1954 was canonized by Pope Pius XII. So uh, by... <laughs> Cause for canonization by the 10th, then venerable by the 11th, and canonized by the 12th. Pious. Oh, there you go. Okay. That's funny. (laughs) A little direction (laughs) there. Um, And his feast day is today, May 6th. 6th. And I have a note here that says it was moved from March 9th 
Uh, he died on March 9th, mm. but I, I do not know why it was moved to May 6th. There must be another feast day that day or something else, maybe. Is that kind of what the same the church does if there's somebody perhaps yeah vulnerable? just so he can have yeah a feast day of his own so that's, i guess no one how, was on may 6th <laughs> that's good you know they were able to fit him on the saints calendar there you go. <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry saint dominic please I'm, I'm making light of your sainthood um i'm sure he doesn't mind as long as we imitate his virtue <laughs> yes yes and he um that's true he it, he i think he did have that joyful spirit i think uh Helped, of course, by Don Bosco, who, who kind of um, uh, helped him on that path away mm-hmm. from uh, you know that you know being from a young age and doing those mortifications. It can, it's it's a little intense mm-hmm. for especially that young. And his health and, was not great, so yeah, John Bosco would say you need to consider <laughs> yeah. what you're doing. Yeah. And he, St. Dominic, is a patron saint of choir boys, falsely accused, and juvenile delinquents. Mm-hmm. And many schools are actually dedicated to boys in his name right now. I'm I believe. Sure. I know there's uh, Don Bosco Prep. Or no, well, that's Don Bosco. Um, yeah, I can't, I don't know. I, I haven't heard of any. Do you know of any? Around? I don't know. I'm sure there are, though, because there are you know, a number of Salesian schools that probably took him as their patron, I would yeah. imagine. Yeah. Well, shall we close with a prayer? Asking I think for so, Saint Lord. Dominic's Saint yeah. Dominic Savio's intercession. O oh, Saint Dominic Savio, model of purity, piety, penance, and apostolic zeal for youth, grant that through your intercession we may serve God in our ordinary duties with fervent devotion and attain the grace of holy joy on earth, that we may one day love God forever in heaven. Amen. Saint Amen. Dominic Savio. Pray for us. Amen.